yogi, master, teacher, healer, energy worker. Tonight I have this calm vibe going on for this video. I'm kind of leaving it open-ended right now. I want it to be a pick a card, something for like your guides to be able to communicate with you about a situation, um, shadow work, some kind of like environment I'm hearing for some of you, um, some like self-experience or self-imposed like feeling that you've been having, just to explore that a little bit more in a safe space, in a space that's going to help you become comfortable, uh, get grounded into your body, and to receive energy that will assist you during this time. So I've tried to kind of have a bunch of my plant friends around me for this video. I was just really feeling um, called to include this kind of like earthy environment. Um, and I have the blue light going on. So we have like this tranquility, this peacefulness, um, but also I feel like a bit of cosmic, like oceanic, almost like resonance, like a Neptune kind of vibe going on. So um, I want to start by lighting our candles, setting our intention together, as I would usually do. Um, and then I'm going to go into pile selection and do a bit of a tarot reading. So um, first I want you to get comfortable and just sit with me while I make some noises and do some intention setting. So some matches in this matchbook. I'm seeing pink and purple and green. So I have a feeling we're gonna be working with self-love and like love in the heart space. We've had quite a few planets in Aquarius recently and we also have our Mercury retrograde in Aquarius. So I feel like this, um, at least for me as a generational a sign or as a generational placement. Um, maybe I'm giving away a bit of my age here, but uh, this Aquarius energy is something that is like rebellious in a spiritual sense and rebellious in a consciousness sense and uh, brings us to analyze the way that we are embodied and showing up in physical spaces, um, but also like how our spiritual energy is being carried into these spaces. So. Um, I feel like recently with this Mercury retrograde, it's something that has been making a lot of people think, oh, I don't even know why I'm trying to write this, but think about like their spiritual self and how um, certain patterns and certain like mindsets have also been contributing to these like spiritual cycles. Um, and that's why this Mercury retrograde, when Mercury goes retrograde, it allows us to kind of go back and sometimes go back into old habits to be able to break free of them. Um, so. I have uh, in front of me, yes, Mercury retrograde again. <laughs> I have the candles, so I have one that's green, and I'm going to use this one as um, kind of uh, an opportunity to open the heart space. To I'm going to set the intention as we light it to allow for our guides that have the highest compassion, the highest wisdom, and the highest. Um, function for our the way that we love the way that we love ourselves the way that we cherish and devote ourselves to things in this lifetime um, to be able to come through and assist the message that is being brought to us and also for our heart to be open to receiving this sometimes when our hearts are cold or like stony almost like hardened um, it's hard for us to see them as malleable to see the ways that we use our heart space as a place of truth and to be able to trust the emotional aspect of ourselves that is being reflected here. So with that being said, I'm going to try and light this match. And if you have an intention for your own heart space, if you've been going through something like relationship wise, or you just like, thank you. I just think of our if you'd like um, something specific for what you've been going through in like your relationships, you can set that intention there. I also want to dress the candle with this Buddha wood oil, if I could get the cap off. And I 
grown out my nails for this video so I can do some nice tacking and scratching but this oil is like woody and earthy a little bit uh, fragrant I don't know why that word is coming to me it's like almost like how citrus is like that I'm gonna put a little bit on my hand. I wanna dress my hand a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's not too scented, it's very fresh. It's almost like cotton. I wanna dress the candle a little bit. We're gonna dress this white candle too. This white candle, when we light this one, I want to light it with the intention that it draws in a blank slate, so almost like the whiteness of a canvas, so that we can, you know when you're doing art almost as therapy, you start to see like the way that even the brush strokes or the way that you're applying the material, even if you're not using paint, um, the way that you're like applying things kind of shows an emotionality to it so it's like um if you're going in really quick and fast it's almost like you're getting all frustration or anxiety or something like that so i want i want for this candle to help us to see the application of our energy how we're applying it um to be able to discern a little bit about where we are in our journey or why we are making the choices that we're making um also i want this to assist in like clearing the space and not just clearing it of all energy but like clearing it of energy that maybe isn't helpful or maybe is rooted in fear or anxiety or something that's not quite so productive i'm trying a new setup today so i don't know what you guys can see so i'm trying to like see in the viewfinder but um, that's what i'm making right now <laughs> Another one of these, and this one. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna try and move my mic up a little bit so maybe you can hear it. Okay. I want to do some cool sparky kind of noises today, but we're gonna light this with that intention, that canvas intention. But also, thank you. <laughs> that your guides that are helping you to recognize specifically during this like mercury retrograde period um, that your guides that are walking with you can also like use that uh, opening of energy to explain a little bit to you okay finally strawberry incense for a general uh, joy or happiness to be protecting this session and I know sometimes when we adhere to like a certain emotion or like trying to focus on the positive or something can be detrimental if we're going through something that is hard um, but I want this space to feel comfortable and usually when you are feeling things that are not tranquil or peaceful or like um, happy I guess I don't have a better word for it um, it creates a safer space so I just maybe we'll light this with the intention that it creates a comforting space a safe space a space where you can feel grounded connected um, and really be able to logically discern sometimes it's good to have a space where we are seeing things on a metaphysical sense but right now i feel like especially during the time that i'm filming this in like this aquarius season with this mercury and retrograde it's important to uh, be able to ground and like uh, logically kind of work through things when our mind is in this space of new territory being kind of 
push to its limits. I feel like most of your guys are very keen kind of push the collective psyche in a new direction, challenge them. I'm gonna do a little bit of group tapping for you on your influence coffin. I guess. continue to create this space. Finally, before I send you guys off into specific groups and like offer up piles, um, I am going to solidify this space of protection, this space of comfort, this space of receiving, receptivity, and then synthesis or what's another better word. I can't really think of a better word for it, but like when you take all these little pieces of data and then you uh, turn it into one thing. So uh, take it that as you do. I guess a data collection, almost like a laboratory. It's like you're being a scientist for your own experience and your emotions and the synchronicities. So we're going to create this space a little bit more. Feel those vibrations moving through your being. I'm almost thinking of like like a scan, like a laser scan. It's kind of scientific too. Okay. So let me get my crystals really quick for the pile selection. Okay. I've got the crystals now. So I'll show them to you each individually so you can kind of uh, resonate with one or another or all of them, however you want to choose. Um, so for pile one, we have this beautiful celestite kind of druidy stone. It's a light blue kind of going with our theme. See if I can get it to glitter for you a little bit. And pile two, we have this little white uh, spherical uh, stone. Reminds me of the moon or like an egg. And then we have for pile three, this obsidian piece and this one has it's interesting it has like little um back and forth uh almost like stripe type of things in it and it's a little bit shiny it reminds me almost of like patent leather or like velcro or something i don't know it's very like material so if you're ready at this time you can either pause the video ask for a sign or a number or if you're ready, you can go to the timestamps in the description and get your personalized like Reiki and tarot message. Um, I will do a final closing to kind of seal up the aura uh, all together as a collective one, so that will also be in the description. But otherwise, feel free to choose, and I'll see you in your pile. Hello, pile one. If you selected pile one, then this is going to be your personalized tarot and Reiki session. I wanted to do this in kind of a point of view style, so 
This right here is going to be your head, close to the camera, and then down here is going to be your feet. And I'm going to do another sound roll just to open the session and to um, allow the guides of Pile 1 who are going to assist with the tarot portion of the video and the Reiki messages to feel free to come through and um, assist and feel honored and respected. So, and to specify the guides of the highest wisdom, ultimate truth, and compassion. basic understanding of where you're at and what kind of energy we're going to be working with when it comes to the Reiki. So I want to get an idea of where you are at mentally and emotionally and spiritually. So just one card. I just saw the Nine of Swords, I'm pretty sure. So y'all may be kind of stressed out. Yep, and we got the Five of Wands right here. So a lot of anxiety. I see this card is kind of being something that's almost like stuck about a career or putting a lot of pressure on yourself when it comes to... Um, making decisions, like trying to feel like you need to be making permanent decisions right now, or also some of you may have like impositions that are like in a physical sense, so like your health may be something that is um, troublesome for you or like preventing you from doing something. Also I feel like some of you are trying to move or like you're trying to um, either move on from a situation or like move physically and you're just feeling very stuck. So um, what kind of energy can help pile one right now at this time to embrace or embody or let in to receive? I got one card. Okay, four of swords in the reverse. So let me show you this card. It has a lamb who kind of has this light coming out of like their third eye area. So this is um, maybe not trying to see a spiritual way out of this situation or like try not really trying to understand um, exactly like every piece that's in this puzzle. So like for some of you, it could be hyper fixating on details of a situation when there's a bigger picture involved. I got this advice like a couple of weeks ago when I was um, really hyper fixated on details of a situation. I was looking too intensely or too closely at like really specific things or like for me at least it was feeling emotions too heavily and allowing them to lead me and so once I stepped back from that wall I could see it was made of bricks and not just some red rubbish if that makes any sense. Um, also the four of swords here is telling me that in terms of embracing energy letting yourself to uh, letting yourself like it's almost like a go with the flow so if things pick up and you're given opportunities to do or to fix situations allow them to come to you instead of seeking them out um, and so in the meantime giving yourself that time to rest giving yourself the time to uh, hold yourself in a space of discomfort um, and knowing that this too shall pass so I want to pull one more card just to any resonating advice or uh, insight into what pile one has going on anything else that i may have not covered completely we have one more card seven of pentacles in the reverse yeah so basically again it's very similar to everything else that i've been saying it's like um the seven of pentacles is being able to plan being able to have foresight um, and in this situation, in the reverse, the Seven of Pentacles is saying that there is no way that you can anticipate the ultimate outcome, and you shouldn't be uh, dis like holding on to an outcome either. Um, in terms of like situations that are frustrating for us, sometimes if we are hyper attached to an outcome of something, we're never going to get where we're supposed to be um, because you're too 
focused on the only way that I'm going to be satisfied is if it turns out this one specific way. And so what Spirit's asking from you is just to release, release the anxiety. Ask yourself the question, why am I feeling anxious? Why do I feel like I need to be controlling of this situation? Or why do I feel like I need to um, have some kind of like uh, one up or be three steps ahead? Is this like a response to some kind of dramatic like control issue in my life? Like, you know, sometimes like we have these stems of things from when we're young and uh, this like a, a trauma response can be to like try and like have definite control over things so that you never have to anticipate an uncertain situation yeah that's a little deep but <laughs> I did ask to be able to assist you in shadow work okay and we have one more card from the dream interpretation oracle and this is just overall energy things from your spirit guides that might help and we have, oh, I'm not going to read this in reverse, excuse me. We have the card music. And this card is somebody holding a harp. They look kind of excited or hopeful, uh, innocent, angelic almost. Um, and do you see how there's like this cube? And the cube is kind of, almost looks like it would fit into this. Sorry, there's a glare into this little piece. Let's see if you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> but it, it looks like this cube could fit right there. And it's like, um, I do feel like there's, there's messages in the music for you. Let me read just really quickly from the guidebook. The music is card 26. Sound, singing, musical instruments, leisure, art, and composition. Also, if some of you I'm hearing are musicians or you do something with sound, um, this could be a really good way of like healing this. Like even if you've never written a song or um, you've never made a video or something, like it, it's the act of like creating sound. It, this could also be talking to somebody, like you need that soundboard um, of somebody to like bounce ideas off of. So I hope that this helped pile one. Now I want to get into the Reiki portion. So something that I think I can help you with as an energy worker in this situation is to um, kind of shake out some of that anxiety, some of that stress that you have going on. And I'm going to close our session with a burning bowl ritual. And I'm going to move this down towards the feet. So like I'm going to be working with the earth star chakra when we're releasing things. Sorry, honey. start with this Himalayan pink salt. Using this to invite in an energy of self-love. Being able to forgive ourselves. I feel like you guys are holding yourself to a really high standard and that's part of where this anxiety is coming from. You're like, I need to fix. I need to control. I need to feel in control. And so um, I want this pink salt to kind of I'm thinking of like making wounds sting, but like in a good way, like where it's, it's a good sting. It, it's like we sting to know that it's still there, that we're still alive, that we can still feel. <laughs> so, um, but I also, I don't want this to just sting, I want this to also cleanse. Um, salt is something that is a result of alchemy. And so when we have this alchemy in our life, we, we recognize the salt of the earth, the, the beautiful products of natural experience. So I'm shaking this around your energy body to invite, to invite for access to fall to the ground, to be drawn down to the feet. released into the earth to crystallize around the feet or 
for the energy of it to be something that is uncomfortable to start to sting so that we can address it, so that we can recognize why it's there, and then we can dissolve it through the emotional release, like how water is tied to emotion. Water also dissolves stuff. You tap on your crystal. You have celestite. I don't really know too much about celestite, but I do know from how it feels, it's really comforting. It's soft. The color is really peaceful, but it's also the color of throat chakra when it's in balance. That light blue. I don't know if you can see it all that well. It's really beautiful for me. It reminds me of angelite, kind of. How angelite as a stone is something that connects us to our higher guidance and allows for us to be a communicator of divine wisdom, of our own personal higher divinity and higher self. And so, also, I feel like that going back to that Four of Swords energy. You're allowing yourself to rest. You're also allowing yourself to recognize your own interpretation when you can speak more clearly and less focused on what you're saying. So I'm going to kind of put this over your body, focusing really on that throat chakra area. Help to balance it. Help you to listen when you need to listen. Interpret when you need to interpret. Speak when you need to speak. Hold space for yourself when you need to hold space. And it's also a little bit salty kind of on the back. I don't know if you can tell. It's so glittery and glimmery. Just like salt. Crystal. Crystallizes. Okay. So I'm going to put this down. Kind of the release for... Oop. And I knocked it over. So I've got baby. Before I do this, I want to take this one on my face. And it's not sharp at all, I'll show you. It's a postal opening, but I want to kind of sever any of this extra energy from around the edges of your body. Almost like a cookie cutter. Allowing for more room for you to expand and space around your own self, but also to not be so attached to other people's energies or energies that have been influencing you. I'm thinking for some of you this is online, especially Mercury and retrograde if you're like on Twitter or something, Reddit, there's a lot of like crazy communication. Okay, so usually I would write something on a bay leaf. But today, I'm feeling that we're not necessarily needing to write something on this leaf. I'll show it to you a little bit. Can you come forward a little bit, too? But with this leaf, we're going to take it and um, set the intention that as this leaf burns, it's releasing anything that is keeping you in a place of anxiety, in a place of um, not allowing yourself to take the space that you need to go within and understand what's going on. So um, I'm just releasing you of this, this anxious energy. Since it didn't burn all the way down, I'm thinking that there's a little bit more of an intention that we can set. And th this bowl right here is um, a bowl of water, so I'm not going to be setting any fires today. But also to allow your, as we burn this next section, to allow for your spiritual team to take on for faith, for trust, 
to your point where you need to go in the time that you need to take. And drawing from that crackly energy, I really want to bring in this crackly kind of energy around you going into the ceiling of the aura if you choose to watch that portion of the video. If not, and you stop here, you go into the next section, this kind of like crackly, um, spidery, veiny, uh, heated energy will go around you to bring warmth to, to your aura and to invite this um, burning off of extra energy, that anxiety. Okay. Thank you so much, Pile One. If you choose to go on to the final closing or collective uh, aura ceiling, then you can do that now. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to pile two. Hello, pile two. You selected pile two for this little moon egg stone then this is going to be a reading and like custom, I guess, energy session. So I'm starting with the cards. I'm using the Wild Unknown Tarot. I'm going to cleanse the deck a little bit and I'm going to ding the sound bell to open the space and allow for your guides of Pile 2 to assist. So I'm going to start by shuffling. I've already seen the Ten of Cups start to come out. The deck isn't quite cooperating with me. Maybe let's try and shuffle a different way. One more shuffle. Yeah, this is a focus on relationships for you guys. You guys have had a rough go of relationships recently. I feel like this is in platonic and romantic situations, um, but just something hasn't worked out in the way that you envisioned it to work out. It's like uh, you're on a completely different page from someone else, um, or like almost idealizing relationship dynamics, or not seeing them for what they were. Let's get one card to characterize pile two. Oh, and we got three cards, so I'm just going to roll with it this does describe a situation. We have the Six of Wands in the reverse. Let me see. We have the Fool in the reverse. And the Nine of Cups. So these three cards together are signifying to me that Yes, while there has been a lack of recognition or feeling unappreciated, um, feeling like you've been stuck or kind of trapped or almost like cocooned in a way, um, soaking in a lot of like negativity or uncomfortable energy, you're, you're like in the process of moving into a time period in your life where you don't have to feel so heavy. I'm getting the like idea of somebody who's wearing like a really muddy coat that's really wet and like drippy with this mud and it's heavy and it drags you and you are taking the, it's like you're making a conscious decision in the next couple of weeks or actually I feel like it's much sooner than that, like a week after you view this to let that coat go. Um, I feel like for some of you, this is in the form of like letting your, like, like letting the dam break. You're letting your emotions free or you're just choosing to up and leave a situation. 
Um, this is going to manifest differently for a lot of you, but I do feel like, especially with the way that this fool is depicted as this baby bird, it's like leaving the nest, empty nest. You're going to almost give, it's, it's almost like you're giving karma to somebody. If somebody's uh, put so much uncomfortable energy on you or like made you feel like you're worthless or made you feel like you're disposable you're gonna be like okay well then see how it feels to be without me it's almost like you're enacting it if some you're like you're like a genie with this nine of cups you are giving somebody like your wish is my command you're like listening to somebody if somebody has told you hey i don't want this you're being like okay well here it is this is um, exactly what you asked for. How does it feel? Like, is this what you really wanted? Um, and it's not spiteful. It's really out of a place of like self-love and out of a place of like not wanting to suffer anymore. Because sometimes the fool, I feel like you know where you need to be. So you start going on that journey. I want to get one more card from you from the Dream Interpretation Oracle. So what is one thing that is supporting this situation from the metaphysical realm? Whoa! And we have a million cards flying out, but two that are upright. I saw this card in my mind's eye. That is so wild. <laughs> we got obedience and sailing going on a voyage, a journey. So, listen, that obedience card is not necessarily to say that you don't have free will in this situation, but it's saying you will do well if you listen to odd advice. <laughs> it's very interesting. Sometimes our spirit guides give us messages that we initially don't feel like are going to be helpful. So we're like, really? You really think that like, ghosting this person or like walking away from the situation or like cutting off communication something like that i feel like it's very um in that area for you guys but like taking that advice that you normally wouldn't do is going to have a payoff for you that moves into this voyage or like moves into a place where it feels like you're coming home sailing can um, be a very dynamic energy it's like giving some wind in your sails being able to move and when these cards connect the way that they have been laid down the arm comes from sailing so when you decide to move move or shift energy in some form that's what's going to allow for this obedience or for you to also have a command of a situation um i feel like part of this is being able to recognize that you have control or you have the ability to like consciously co-create and like make choices that will assist in the journey that you're already on so i hope that that helps um now before i move completely into the reiki portion i have bay leaves i've been called to do like a little burning bowl ritual for each of the piles and I usually would write something on a bay leaf to like burn to release, but I am feeling like today um, I want to just do this more open-ended um, and kind of speak the intention as we do this. So I'm going to go this way for you a little bit. with the reading that I just did for you. I'm feeling like what, what we need to release is like a doubt of the guidance that we receive. Um, and by we, I mean you. <laughs> Sometimes I use that like we pronoun kind of as a inclusive, but um, just to kind of release the doubt of like the, the intuition that that guidance that we get from something beyond um, and doubt of the path that we're walking so like seeing things conventionally like i want to release that conventional or conservative viewpoint that you may have adopted um to allow for you to like see the gray area of a situation and then be able to act accordingly 
um, not see relationships as having to be this way or that way, but seeing them as something that can um, be a lot more nuanced, that you have more power in how they are constructed and how they manifest. Ashes everywhere. Okay. And this is a little bowl of water. It smells so good. Okay. I'm going to put this down in a root underneath, kind of around the earth star chakra to allow for that release um, to go down into your roots and to nourish that water to kind of um, almost water you like a plant, like if you were a tree. I'm feeling called to do another little sound bell before I start the Reiki. And I want to start by sending in a golden light to surround your body, your feathery, almost, I'm seeing like almost like Pegasus feathers. I don't know why such a, an ethereal creature, creature but um, horses are in general or like equestrian animals. They are good for travel, they're good for carrying, um, transporting, uh, assisting. And so with those extra wings, it's like the ability to do that on the astral, the ability to do this in a spiritual sense, so transporting spiritual information. So I'm seeing this golden light coming across your body and specifically tapping into the root chakra and the crown. to open up the rest of the channel to this golden energy. I want to use this little knife. Um, and it's not sharp at all. It's just a letter opener. But I'm going to use this along the sides of you. And I'm feeling like specifically around the hip area, there's some kind of um, energy that almost feels... Um, achy, like in your joints, really feeling something out of there. It's like maybe you need to do some like hip flexor exercises or something. So I'm cutting away attachments that you have there. I'm thinking of how um, Libra is controlling of like the thighs and the hip area. So maybe looking where Libra is in your chart, or like the seventh house. Ah, uh, there you go, relationships, <laughs> sensuality. Not that this area isn't used for other things, but I just feel like that's a good theme. And for some of you, it's important to ask the question, like, how do relationships that were modeled for me? influence the way that I then uh, try and model my own relationships or follow models of relationships that have been put in front of me. So I'm putting things away from the head too. Okay. And I'm going to do one last thing. I have these pieces of fern that I collected. So I just want to do a little crunchy to bring in an energy of like wrapping. I'm seeing you almost being like wrapped like a mummy. Like back into that cocoon energy to um, encapsulate you and help you feel secure and safe and you know how dogs get like thunder jackets that like hold them and squeeze them when they have anxiety. It's like that. Like, helps you to be more confident and decisive. So imagining wrapping being wrapped around your body. Do a little 
with a couple of hand movements and then send in some traditional Reiki symbols. it. Um, if you feel called to, you can go to the collective uh, closing ceremony, which is going to be timestamped in the description. Otherwise, you can stay for pile three, just watch all the way through, or I will see you in another video. So, bye pile three. Hello pile three. If you selected pile three or this obsidian piece, then this is going to be your reading and Reiki session. So to open this session and to honor your guides that are going to help me, um, I want to do just a light uh, sound bell to clear the space and open it up. Now, with this obsidian piece, um, I feel like you are, the message that's coming through is that just that you're really protected right now. I also feel like your energy or your consciousness has gone through some kind of upgrade recently or you just walked out of the dark night of the soul. I feel like you're you're in a better space. Um, you've digested things. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little bit more tapping and scratching on that in a second, but I want to start doing a reading for you. I apologize for the air conditioning coming on. I hope that that's not too distracting. You're in a very confident headspace. Um, almost like overconfident. Um, but I do feel like it's because you have recognized a lot of the things that you've gone through. I feel like it's like the shadow work is really manifesting and it's become very concrete. Like you can portray or explain to somebody without it hurting too much. Um, yeah, this is what I've gone through recently, and this is how it's helped me. This is what it's helped me to realize about my own self. Um, so I just want to ask that the guides of Pile 3 please come through, help to assist with a clear message for me to see where they're at overall in their situation. Just one card. Okay, interesting. So some of you may have seen another pile because we had a repeat card but we have the queen of pentacles so grounded uh feminine earth energy and not to say that this is a gendered reading at all but this um feminine energy in the divine sense is one that is able to um specifically in the suit of pentacles as the mother uh, nurture and provide, but also to uh, understand signs and to uh, be able to relay these signs, um, be comforted in these signs, and then also I feel like some of you are like lit quite literally like making things because pentacles is a very like grounded energy and it's something that is like productive. And so I feel like a lot of you are receiving like signs from nature or spending more time with nature and then you are being able to translate this into like artistic creation. So for some of you, this is like being able to make things that have to do with this work that you've done. And then the Nine of Cups is a really positive energy to be paired with this Queen of Pentacles too. Like not only are you empowered, not only are you um, being and showing up as the person that you want to be for other people and being able to create the things that you want to create, you're uh, manifesting for yourself, not from a greedy place, but from a place of like abundance and from a place of like self-direction and knowing what you want and like being able to not give up even when things are like difficult or like possibly not worth haven't worked out in the way that you wanted them to in the past you're seeing past that and you're seeing how all those little tiny um 
oopsies, all those things that were frustrating for you at one point are now really uh, helpful because you're not going to have to make those mistakes again. Sorry, got to wipe off some of the uh, dust in the street. I want to get, I feel like I'm missing a little bit of something. So what am I missing about pile three and what's going on? Or what, what energy do we need help with? Okay, and I don't know if you saw that fly out, but the Ace of Swords just flew. Ace of Swords, turning over a new leaf, um, especially in a, in a mental sense. Let me show you this card since it's so prominent, I feel like, to your experience right now. This is um, being able to actually turn over that new cycle, to actually put things into action. I feel like some of you, now that you have this ability to do things, it's almost like you got a little bit too comfortable in it. Um, and you can't exactly see the fruits of your labor quite yet because you're not like telling yourself. It's the affirmation side of it. Um, you need to start affirming yourself like, yes, I can. I am abundant, like I can do what it takes to get through what I am trying to get through, to uh, be confident, to be comfortable having people see me as abundant, having people see me as this beautiful creator. Um, I feel like some of you, it's almost like surreal, like you haven't gotten to the point where you're fully comfortable, like saying out loud, yes, this is who I am, this is what I do. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna help you with that affirmation and I feel like sorry I keep picking up and putting back one more card, please for pile three What what affirmation can we have? What energy Is specifically helping okay another fly I Saw this at the beginning of your reading the Knight of Swords. Not seeking approval from someone else, being able to take that inspiration, take that knowledge, take that wisdom, take that uh, energy of the mind and put it to good use um, and not get so caught up in who's affirming what to us. It's being able to affirm ourselves in this situation. Now I'm going to use the oracle deck that I pulled out, which is the dream interpretation oracle, to kind of get a metaphysical sense of what energy is supporting you right now. Oh, and we got two cards. This is loneliness, 28. Yeah, so I feel like some of you are like maybe shocked a little bit about that queen of pentacles that came out. Like, are you sure you're talking about me? Um, I feel like that abundance that like good naturedness that is coming from you is going to attract like-minded people i feel like a lot of you are actually going to be um building new relationships or new friendships with people because you've walked out of these like cycles of frustration and so some of you um are almost like you may be wondering where your spiritual team is or where your spirit guides are right now and it's because they've already poured in so much information with me i'm in school right now and a lot of times um, my classes go in these cycles so like at the beginning my teachers will give us inspiration they'll give us readings they'll give us things to be looking at to take in information and then we have to like write an essay um, in art we have to produce because uh, i do study art but like we have to produce that back and so um, for a lot of you right now is the production time it's the time to not really be receiving so much but to be giving um, and to be uh, repurposing and then we have the card wedding which is interesting what did I say about getting new relationships um, that loneliness that you may feel in a spiritual sense is going to be filled in the physical. So maybe not necessarily a wedding for some of you it could be, but I am feeling like this is more, for a lot of you, this is more of like a union of spirits. So this is a union of um, like wisdom and compassion in relationships uh, being reflected to you in the physical so like where you feel lack in a spiritual sense or where you may feel like alone it's going to be supplemented by 
uh, relationships that are really supportive or these could also be relationships like routines that you start to make with your own self that help you to feel like um, there's some kind of support, some kind of stability, some kind of unity within your own self. Okay, so for me as a energy worker, I am supposed to help to supplement whatever I feel like you could benefit from right now. And for, uh, from what I picked up on in that reading, I feel like right now it's more of the confidence um, and the motivation to actually carry out the things that you've been inspired to do and then also to affirm these like lovely positive things about yourself. So what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to bring in, I have this like cat toy, I just, <laughs> I know it's kind of silly but I love the noise that it makes. Um, so I'm going to use this noise to uh, clear away any of that chatter or that noisiness in the mental body that is not functioning for your highest good or for the highest function of like what you need to do. So anything that is um, not in alignment or coming from sources that are not for the highest function of what you need to do, maybe um, drowning those noises out. So. I didn't explain. I'm doing this portion in a point of view session, so like this is your head and these are your feet. So um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing it across the body as if you were laying here, so working on your energy system. today I decided to burn a bay leaf and these are really cool. I'll just use a container a little bit. Hopefully there's not too much water. And what I usually do when I'm doing work with myself is that I'll burn bay leaves as a release. And for you, um, I'm feeling like what we need to release is like self-limiting ideas, um, ideas that like for example we need to work a lot in order to deserve to receive back. Um, for some of you I feel like this is in a career sense, for others of you it may be in relationships. Um, for, I feel like some of you, this is like creative blocks. Like if you're in a creative block, like you're just stuck there, you know, like the idea that like you need to experience creative blocks or like fit into certain paradigms. So I'm going to release these like limiting, um, ideas or ideologies that are just not, not serving your function or, um, also I feel like I'm thinking of, sorry. <laughs> when you want to remove like an entity from someone or some kind of negative presence or a presence that isn't comfortable i guess i don't really like to call things negative but when you're removing that you need to understand why it's there in the first place so um with this intention of releasing it helping to understand in place so we can't just invite this idea or the this belief system back part of the leaf point
lots of bowls of water so that we don't set anything on fire and that's going to be kind of to nourish your earth star chakra to allow for things to continue growing for you to feel spiritually nourished in your physical realm so i'm going to be tapping on this block of obsidian that we chose to help bring in do you have a dark purple energy of protection wisdom understanding being able to see what am I communicating through these ideas that I'm having what am I serving in the physical when I am listening to the guidance that I've been given energy into the crown, balancing it out, and it running through all the rest of the chakra systems, all the way through, lighting them up and balancing each and every one of them. I'm thinking of the sacral chakra right now, I'm sending in the master symbol, awakening the kundalini through a house of this motivation this passionate red snake to stand straight up, send tingles up through the spine allow for this belief in us to create the reality that we want and to be a co-creator, be an actor be empowered in our ability to do that and to be authentic and genuine and beautiful you are special you are confident you are brave <laughs> i apologize if you hear my cat <laughs> you are fantastic you are beautiful you are so needed you have such a beautiful purpose in this life I think that that's it, Palfrey. Thank you so much. I honor the divine in me and the divine in myself. And I hope to see you in another video. If you want to stick around, I'm going to do the final collective uh, aura balancing and fluffing. Um, but yeah, so I will see you there. of guidance, a little bit of um, clairvoyant messages, an image of something that is supporting you, like some kind of tangible energy, and um, a little bit of like a barrier almost <laughs> between us and the outside world to help assist with this energy as it settles in. I'm thinking of PB and J for some reason. So some of you may need to eat or treat yourself like in a way that's also healthy or something because that looking plus a whole grain creates a protein, but it's still tasty. Um, but I'm thinking of like many different layers that are going to be on the outside of this energy to help 
hold all the same since the energy is going to be different for each of you depending on which power you chose or even if you chose all three um, let me get I'm really drawn back to pile one's celeste type so for this first layer of energy that's on the right hand side thinking of like circles Halos almost. What else is there? The great flower or the daisy. Yeah, daisy chain. Kind of flapping around. Like a hug. We just worked the petals. How beautiful. specifically the heart and the chalice we have energy to go through the body kind of through the arms and into the hands down into the feet open up into the heart space I'm sorry if you hear my kitty out there he's, he's upset that he's not missing <laughs> to help us feel confident and comfy and light not like this is this protective layer is constricting or restricting but it is there to help us with our mess <laughs> if you want to call them that and again that salty energy is being something that supports transformation in that outcome. Okay. And I want to do a little bit of background here too. Okay. And I think the final layer I'm just going to put in some traditional Reiki symbols and use your hands to draw in a light. And this light, I want you to imagine around you right now is a green light to kind of go with our theme. It has little sparkles of gold in it. And it's almost like a lens like an intuitive lens so that when you see things or you hear things or your senses are activated uh, that they they grasp and they recognize when it's a part of your journey and it's aligned with what you need to pay attention to and that this energy also again is protective of the heart space helps us to recognize um, places, people, and spaces that honor this heart space and to kind of keep us shielded if we do have to be in contact with things that aren't exactly as honoring. <laughs> I'm going to send him some traditional Reiki symbols. around you and float through that green and gold and assist. Okay. So I'm going to close it up with 
sever the connection between you to allow you to do what you do. Thank you so much. I want to thank your guides, my guides, every other place in the universe that have brought us together and honor it. I want to honor your journey, honor your commitment to yourself. Send you so many blessings and so much support. So much love. I'll see you in another video.